this is so cool. I'm chatting with all these people on the mesh and like some of them are like 20 kilometers away. It's not even using the internet. It's just literally doing it over radio. Look at how many stations there are in the area. It's crazy. Welcome back to the channel guys, hope everyone's doing well. Today we're going to be looking at this device. This is called the SenseCap Indicator and it's from a company called Seed Studio and we featured Seed Studio, some of Seed Studio's products before um, and I'm particularly interested in the uh, their hardware that has lower radios built in so you can use it with mesh radio networks. Now this particular one here is actually the SenseCap Indicator that's available with MeshTastic firmware uh, preloaded so if we boot it up basically you'll see MeshTastic start straight away. Now if you're not familiar with MeshTastic basically what MeshTastic is it's an off-grid communication system that allows you to send very short text messages um, between devices and mobile devices as well standalone devices like this and it operates completely independently of the internet doesn't require any internet connection anything other than radio so it basically uses like little antennas like this to to um, send the information over the airwaves and other devices in the in sort of radio range will actually pick up the message as well now the other cool thing about mesh tastic and other mesh radio kind of networks is that they are just that they are a network so they mesh together so the more of these devices that are in an area they will basically relay messages across the network so you can end up having you know hundreds of kilometers of range um, and you can obviously contact people a long long way away so as you can see i've powered on the device here just with a simple usb cable usb c it's not even power delivery it just runs off of the normal five volts um, you can see here a message just has just literally come in here and um, we've got quite a busy mesh actually over this area um, as you can see this by the fact there's 82 of 110 nodes online so this area is quite busy with um, nodes and when I say nodes I mean basically lots of these devices around in an area so they're able to network together so yeah this is the main screen let's just dive into the the message screen so we can just clear that off so I can um, you know show you this but basically yeah someone's just written here not me squire it's obviously part of a conversation which we haven't got the rest of the conversation because we've only just turned turned the device on so if we go back to the home screen here you can see there's also the time we've got the lower uh, information for the radio here which shows you the frequency we're on this is sort of preset depending on what area you're in you can change this of course in the settings but generally in each area you'll have a specific band you, you need to use um, notifications it shows banner only um, the sound that you heard wasn't actually coming from this device it was coming from another node um, that I've got around here basically the long and short of it is this device obviously connects to other devices in your area and you can see obviously we've got there's 82 in this in this area around me um, so it's it's very 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 good quite a dense area um, now to see the other nodes in the area what you can do is you can hit this this next um, icon down here and this is effectively your node list so at the moment it's set to show you the most recent ones that it's picking up so you can see here Hartford now this is one of my home stations it's not actually another one of these but it's another another device um, that I'm using because MeshTastic runs on lots of different types of hardware but this particular device is interesting because it's ready to go all you've got to do is plug power into it make a few basic settings like setting your username and stuff and you're good to go so you can see here Hartford station that's that's obviously mine you've got a signal strength here which is obviously very very strong and a signal to noise ratio battery uh, information for the node that's that's um that you're picking up which mine doesn't show there because I'm using something else but but if you look at some of the others here you can see 4.28 volts it's quite good to have in the telemetry because if you've got remote nodes out there you know tied up in trees and stuff um, to help expand the network then um, you know you'll be able to see their voltage and, and track this so effectively lots of nodes out there you can see here and that's obviously why we were sort of you know it wasn't long before we got got a message so if we go in here and go to long fast this is a public channel where anyone can talk on you can have private channels you can have encrypted channels um, and do direct messaging without you know anyone else seeing it but this is kind of fun because you get to speak to all the locals and it's like a, a kind of an old school chat room really um it's quite good so this device obviously doesn't have a keyboard but there is an on-screen keyboard on here as well um now i know who that station is so i'm just gonna say um hi neil um 
do you copy? So you can see, you know, the the on-screen keyboard is actually quite quite usable. Um, apart from I've missed the word out totally there, but <laughs> hey yo, um, and we're going to do that, and hopefully he'll come back for the purposes of this video. Um, just see where the yeah, the question mark is is there. There you go. So we can just send that out, and what you should hear is probably my other device here, bleep. And I'll show you that as well. This is running a different type of firmware, but basically there's my message there appeared on my other uh, device here. And this is like a sort of Blackbreed kind of all-in-one device as well. So I'm really loving these all-in-one devices because it just allows you to, you know, use this without having to pair it to a phone or do loads of different setup and, you know, figure out how you're going to kind of run this thing. Um, it just works out of the box. I mean, it's just so cool. Right, so you can see here, Neil has actually replied there. Um, I'm actually going to say, he probably doesn't realise it's me because I'm on a different device. Um, but it's just going to say it's Andy. Yeah, we'll just send that and see, see if he comes back. But yeah, basically that is, in a nutshell, how this works. You can send sort of messages over the public space. And this gets quite cool in the evening sometimes, you know, especially these kind of long winter nights. You get like a lot of conversations happening on here. People messing around, trying different things with their aerials. Um, that is another subject which I'll come on to in a minute. This is basically a, a very simple antenna that I've got on here. Um, and it won't work as well as this if you haven't got other nodes around you. So you will have to use something a bit more substantial to, to actually kind of um, make contact. And I'll, kind, I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So you can see here, conversations continuing. Um, he's saying, are you mobile or are you, are you testing? So let's just go back to him and say, I'm testing a new device for YouTube. Um, obviously this keyboard, you know, is not the fastest thing in the world. Um, you have to bear in mind you're using a, you know, an ESP32 device with a, a touchscreen. It's not the most powerful thing in the world, um, but you can get the job done on a device like this. If you want to use a smartphone, I've got this kind of cool e-ink um, smartphone here that runs um, Meshtastic app as well. So you can sort of do it on an Android device or an iOS device if you really want to. And then you get the, obviously the full mobile experience. Uh, it's a lot more easy to use. So other stations are starting to appear here. So you've got Colin and, and Subnet over in Hoddesdon there. So I'm in Hartford, and if you know this area, then you know, you'll know you be familiar. But if not, just to give you an idea. So I'm about 17 kilometers away from um, Neil, uh, this one here, this station here. And then basically I'm in the middle, and then there's probably another eight, eight kilometers or something like that from here to Colin and Subnet. So you can see there's quite a big area covered. I mean, if I actually show you on this device, which has maps, um, unfortunately this one doesn't have maps at the moment, but you can see here, look at the density of, of my area. Um, that is kind of, that gives you an idea of how many devices that are actually in uh, this area. And not all of them are using small antennas like this. Some of them are, are using big antennas that are outside. So this is where this kind of hobby can go. You can end up kind of, you know, having uh, big antennas outside to enhance your coverage. And it is it is really kind of necessary. If you if you want to get really good range, um, the best thing to do is kind of, you know, have antennas mounted outside. But what's cool about this device is you could, if you were in a high location, all you may need is just this device on a window ledge in your window. And you might actually find, so because you've got a USB port there, you can, um, you can plug into that back one. And it's even got like a little kind of kickstand out like that. So it can it can sit obviously when you haven't got that plugged in the bottom. But yeah, I know users that are using other nodes like the, the original Heltex, which you can kind of put into a 3D printed case, just literally stuck on a window ledge somewhere and they're getting out pretty well and being, being able to sort of communicate on the mesh. But this device does make it quite easy because you've got various ways of mounting this. But I've actually linked a couple of antennas that would work really well with this um, because this is just a connector. You can unscrew that. I won't do it right now, but you can unscrew that and then it's just a, a straightforward SMA connector. So you can have a small bit of small bit of coax is fine, not too much. You don't want to run like 10 meters of coax to an antenna because there's a lot of loss with the frequency um, that this is running on. But effectively you could run like a small mobile antenna through the window 
um, have this on the other side of the window. You know, you could actually make this work quite well with even the modest of antennas. So before I chip off and leave you all excited with all this mesh radio goodness, um, I'm going to show you the settings menu on here because it might be useful if you're just getting into this to see how you would potentially configure one of these devices. So it's pretty simple. The minimal settings you've got to put in are your username and your long name. So basically your short name and your long name. That's You get two ways of displaying your information um, on the main screen. And so you can see here, like for example, this one here, Waze, that's the short name. And then you've got Chris WGC001 Mobile as the long name. So it's just basically your username. The second setting here is your region setting. So you do need to set this because otherwise, you know, you'll be in the wrong, uh, on the wrong frequency plan. So there's lots of different frequency plans you can select. Um, basically for EU, you need to be in EU868 and then all will be good. The modem preset pretty much everyone uses in the UK is long fast. It's just a good balance between range and speed so you can just use that and you pretty much have no problems at all um, now for the small devices like this it's probably advisable to run them in client mute which basically turns off the repeating functions of the device so it won't actually repeat because really small devices like this aren't really going to contribute much to the mesh unless they've got like a big good big antenna on um, so client mute is best for little devices like this. Wi-Fi you don't need to turn on. There's no Wi-Fi features you can use really. Uh, there's MQTT, but it's not really advisable to use on this device. You've got screen timeout as well, which obviously just turns the screen off. Screen brightness, you can see it's pretty bright screen this, and it's only on 79%. You've got another theme as well. You can change that to uh, a light theme as well in there, um, which does look quite nice on this screen as well. Languages, I don't know if those have been... Uh, implemented yet but also got the tools menu this is quite cool this does various things you can trace route different stations so you can sort of trace route um, and find out the routes between other stations this doesn't always work um, on here so you might have to kind of you know try multiple times I think they've put a 30 second limit on this now but as you can see it, this doesn't always work <laughs> there you go it's worked for the video so you can see here um, quite interesting uh, this is stations about eight kilometers away and it doesn't know these two stations but um, we've got sense cap indicator which is this one Hartford which is my one outside here uh, TRON which is another station which is around seven kilometers I think away might be a little bit more um, which is bridging the gap so you can see how it's networked you know across don't ask me why these are unknown but yeah it's kind of cool to see you know what stations it's routing through um, but yeah, doesn't always work that setting. You've got a statistics page here as well, which is pretty useful for finding out if anyone's spamming packets on the net. Um, and you've got a packet log as well, which once when you open for the first time, it, it will uh, start populating. And that sort of gives you like more raw packets of what's coming in and going out of the node. It's really clever stuff, guys. The map you've got here is not implemented on this at the moment. It would be nice if that would come soon. Please, developer, get the map sorted on this. Uh, firmware. We've got maps on, on this one, which is quite nice as well. And all the tiles are basically stored on an SD card. This does have an SD card slot, so it should be possible. Also, this firmware will most likely run on this device as well um, with a few tweaks. So looking out for that, um, we should have this firmware running on here as well. So it would be possible to have maps, even though not kind of officially supported on the uh, on the actual Meshtastic firmware. Anyway, guys, if you want to learn more about this stuff, there's loads of content on this channel about Meshtastic and Mesh Radio Networks. Um, so go check out the other videos. Um, you'll be able to see more of this device. I'm going to do more videos of it and obviously all the other devices that we've got around here that run on <laughs> various different uh, mesh firmware. So it's kind of it's kind of a really exciting time for the for the mesh radio scene at the moment. Lots of new stuff happening. So if you want to grab one of these devices and get going straight away, um, I've left the link in the description as well. It's a pretty good price actually. It's under fifty dollars or so for one of these. And yeah, hope you've enjoyed this one. Catch you next time.